What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, 10 minutes of WWE facts you don't know by Tap Out Corner. This is a, uh, I've never seen this channel before. So, when I saw the title of this video, I was like, you know what? I think this would be pretty cool. So, uh, definitely going to see what Tap Out Corner uh has what like what type of facts he was able to come up with this should be a good one man it should be a good one it's a different channel so definitely go check out tap out corner uh if you haven't already um and uh, i'm definitely gonna go subscribe to him because this is like a pretty good vid or whatnot uh I, I love me some like facts i didn't know about a company or or a thing that i thought i knew a lot about so hopefully there's some new facts about things i didn't know and this should be a good one but appreciate all the love and support you guys been showing on the channel man uh we're almost at 70k you guys have been running up the views running up the likes and running up to the subscriptions so thank you so much man and uh let's get right into this video do you know why wwe always has the good guys on the left side of the ring during tag team matches the reason is so viewers can see the emotions on the wrestlers faces mm. psychologically people can better connect with someone when they can see their expressions Okay, Did you know, when a WWE wrestler wins money in the bank, they have to carry the briefcase with them everywhere they go, even when they aren't at shows. Oh. The reason for this is so that the wrestler can have the briefcase with them when they do media appearances. When CM Punk won the money in the bank, he actually started carrying his gear in the briefcase. Oh wow. Did Didn't you know, know that? There's actually two to three versions of every championship in WWE. Hmm. Each belt has one version that's only used on TV. It's purposely only used at televised events to prevent it from getting worn out and looking bad. There's also a second version of every WWE title belt that the champion carries with them wherever they go. Wrestlers will use this belt at autograph signings, media appearances, and even non-televised shows. For some championships, they also have a third version that's kept at WWE's headquarters in Sanford, Connecticut. This one is used for photo shoots and media. Another reason WWE always has two versions of every belt is so that if one gets lost, they will always have a backup. Wow, didn't know that. That's that's crazy. I know I knew that sometimes they, you know, a lot of times they would carry the belts with them, but I didn't know there was multiple versions for one for television use and one for uh um like maybe photo ops media use. I didn't know that. That's that's pretty interesting. The same thing with the money in the bank. I didn't know they actually took it with them wherever they went. That's pretty cool. Did you know? During a match between Big John Studd and Andre the Giant, Andre fell asleep. Big John Studd locked Andre in a front face lock and held it for about eight and a half minutes as he tried to wake his opponent. Apparently, Andre would sometimes fall asleep during matches due to a combination of drinking and travel fatigue. Oh wow. Did you know? In Chris Jericho's first ever wrestling match, his name was spelt wrong. The company he was working for forgot to include the H in Jericho. <laughs> also, Y2J was originally a cowboy from Casper, Wyoming. Jericho Jericho hated the character and abandoned it soon after his first match. That's good. That's, Did that's you know good. the shield was originally going to be Daniel Bryan, Big Show, and CM Punk? WWE wanted to give what? CM Punk some henchmen to protect him, since Punk was supposed to be a cowardly bad guy. Punk didn't like the idea and suggested these guys who had never been seen by the fans before. Mm. It ultimately turned into the shield we all know. And that was that was good. That was awesome. That that worked out even better, man. Because they, they, them being in the shield catapulted them th to huge heights. And in the storyline, the shield is being paid by CM Punk and Paul Heyman to help Punk retain his WWE Championship. Did you know that when he was an active wrestler, WWE Hall of Famer Scott Hall, or Razor Ramon, refused to sign an autograph for a kid with cancer? Here's wow. the full explanation. But these guys came to me with a camera crew and stuff. And the, the little kid was not present. I just don't want to be a part of this whole thing. Like, no, thank you. Yeah, and I didn't feel good. My defibrillator had fired early that earlier that day. Mm. Did you know? The Undertaker hates cucumbers. It's hard to believe, considering his nickname is The Dead Man, but Undertaker simply can't stand them. One what? time, while at a restaurant, The Undertaker threw up because there was a cucumber in his drink. The wow. female's fellow wrestlers would also play pranks on him by putting cucumbers in his boots and hat. The strange part is that no one really seems to know why The Undertaker hates cucumbers. Out of all the people to hate cucumbers or something like that, it would be him. He's just the sight of a cucumber. Uh, uh, <laughs> get it away. That's funny. There's so much. According to the Undertaker's manager, Paul Bearer, Undertaker's mother made him eat cucumbers when he was a kid, when mm. the Undertaker didn't want to. Cucumber. I, I hate cucumbers. 
<laughs> oh, he Did you legit know? hates Jeff him. Hardy had his very first WWE match in 1994 against Razor Ramon. Damn. However, Hardy hated the match so much, he didn't want to wrestle anymore wow. after it was over. Two days later, Hardy had another match, this time with the 123 Kid, or X Pac. He felt much better after that and decided to keep on wrestling. Wow. Jeff Hardy eventually got signed by WWE and became a decorated champion. Did you know? That's crazy. At the he has been wrestling that long. Oh, wow, that's insane, bro. That is insane. To be wrestling that long and still be doing it or still able to do it? That's, that's, that's dope. The Performance Center, Sasha Banks came up with her boss character. The character is inspired by her cousin, Snoop Dogg. Mm. However, when she started using it, all the trainers and coaches hated it, except for one. Dusty Rhodes mm. loved the boss character and told Sasha to keep using it. If Dusty hadn't been so positive, imagine where Sasha Banks' career would have gone. Rest in peace, Dusty, man. And uh, he saw something. He saw something in that character and... Without, I'm going to be honest, her having that gimmick works. It fits her. It makes sense. She comes off as braggadocious, arrogant, but she can back it up in the ring. And it's a dope character. I think a lot of people like Sasha, uh, Sasha Banks' character, preferably when she's a heel. She's much better as a heel, but she still has that swagger even when she's a face. So I think people have definitely enjoyed her boss gimmick. Did you know? It's really hard to earn Brock Lesnar's respect. Seth Rollins has wrestled Lesnar multiple times, but it took years before the Drift God was respected the by God. the Beast Incarnate. After the WrestleMania 35 match, Seth brought a pack of beer to Brock Lesnar's locker room. The two drank together and were able to connect on a personal level. Oh, okay. According to Rollins, this is the moment that he earned Brock Lesnar's respect. Did you know, okay. shortly after The Shield debuted in 2012, they attacked Randy Orton after the Viper had a match. There was no rehearsal, so Orton was caught by surprise and became legitimately angry. He thought The Shield was trying to hurt him for real and vented his frustration backstage. Wow. He was specifically mad at Dean Ambrose. After Orton had walked away, Triple H then told The Shield not to worry about it. Did you? Wow, so he didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know that was legit going on, bro. That's crazy. He thought he was legit getting jumped. <laughs> that hey but it makes for good television if sometimes they uh wwe they'll do that where like they won't tell the announcers certain spots are about to happen so they can give their real genuine honest like reaction to it and i think that's pretty cool <laughs> it just kind of kind of comes off a little bit uh i guess you can say extreme when you don't know what's happening and you end up just getting jumped you're like wait what this wasn't part of the script what are you guys doing <laughs> Did you know, before joining WWE, Alundra Blaze, or Medusa, was homeless and living on the streets. Wow. She also owed the IRS $80,000. However, Ooh. Vince McMahon got in touch with Alundra and offered her a WWE contract. McMahon also asked her if there was anything else he could do for her. The future WWE Hall of Famer mentioned her debt, and the next day, Vince McMahon sent her a check for $80,000. The sad part is, about two years later, Alundra Blaze would join WWE's competitor, WCW, and drop the Women's Championship in the trash on live tv oh, did you know wow now i'm not sure what went what went you know what i'm saying what what happened back backstage you know what i'm saying the fact that vince did that that's awesome but we don't we still don't know the type of treatment she was giving backstage just because someone eliminates your debt doesn't mean they still have your best interest you know people do nice things and i put quotations on nice things for other people just so they can always be like, remember when I did this for you? Remember when I did that for you? You know, so we don't know. But that's 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 one of the reasons why Vince was always just afraid of, like, putting champions on certain people. Because when they can end up leaving and do shit like that. That's wild. In 2003, Bobby Lashley was in a bank when a robbery broke out. Oh. Unfortunately, a bullet grazed Lashley and his knee was injured. Damn. Bobby Lashley was in the middle of training for the Olympics when this happened, but his dreams of competing were shattered after the injury. Damn. While recovering, WWE reached out and offered Bobby an opportunity to wrestle for them. Bobby Lashley took them up on their offer, and 18 years later, he became a WWE champion. That's crazy, Did you man. know, every time she wrestles, Lacey Evans always has a letter from a fan in one of her boots. These letters are usually very inspiring stories, like a fan who is motivated by Lacey Evans to fight drug addiction. Oh, Evans wow. keeps letters like these to help remind herself of the impact she can have on someone's life. I mean, she's not that good in the ring, my personal opinion, but that is still awesome. 
to see that she motivates other people to keep fighting their addictions and she keep those letters in the boots. That's pretty cool. I can't I can't knock that. She may not be someone that I would care to see on television wrestling wise, but it's still cool to see that though. Did you know when the New Day first started, they were supposed to be good guys. The oh. fans weren't into the group and Xavier Woods thought they should become villains. He mm. pitched the idea to Vince McMahon who was skeptical and didn't think it would work. Woods then said if he couldn't get the fans to hate them in four weeks, McMahon could fire him. Vince McMahon agreed to the deal oh. and thankfully Xavier Woods was successful and the New Day became the most hated group on the WWE they did. They did. They were heels. That's a bold statement to say to Vince because he'll do it. He'd be like, yo, if I can't get them to hate me in four weeks, you can fire me. Let's go. I right, deal. You know Vince loved to fire people. That's crazy. And it worked. They became the most hated group for a while. And then they started getting over. So it, it all comes full circle. Roster. Did you know, since returning to WWE in 2018, Bobby Lashley has not made any appearances on SmackDown. The closest Lashley ever got to being on the show was in 2019, when SmackDown aired a video the Almighty posted on his Twitter account. The last time Bobby Lashley physically appeared on SmackDown was in 2007. Damn. Did you know, know that. in 2011, Mark Henry was told to go out to the ring. Shout out to Mark Henry and shout out to his son, Jacob Henry, man. He was in my, my live stream. Uh... When we was watching AEW, uh, he follows me on Twitter. I follow him back. Hey, man, keep doing your thing. I'm not sure if you'll see this video. Keep doing your thing, man. Uh, he's I know he's in the wrestling right now. He actually does. I think he plays football and he wrestles or whatnot. So keep doing your thing, bro. I'm looking forward to see you one day on television just like your father. And wrestle match against Sin Cara. However, Sin Cara never came out, and the entire thing was a prank pulled on Mark Henry. Henry felt disrespected and became so mad that he was going to quit WWE. Vince McMahon later apologized, but thought that the anger Mark Henry experienced would make for a great character. This then created the Hall of Pain storyline that eventually led to Henry becoming World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, wow. I mean, it's kind of fucked up, but damn. So basically... He sat up there, made it seem like he was about to fight someone, never came out. It was all a prank. He got pissed. He was like, bro, I'm about to leave this shit. Wow. And this started the Hall of Pain. What? Didn't know that. That's interesting. <laughs> Did Holy. you know, Boogeyman wasn't going to eat worms. Martin Wright, the man who played the Boogeyman character, wanted to eat bugs like cockroaches, maggots, oh. crickets, and more. However, the arenas WWE hosted their shows at were afraid that the bugs would get loose and cause an infestation. They decided just to have the Boogeyman eat worms Ugh. since WWE could control that. Did you know, even though John Cena is his real name, WWE still owns it. This what? means when John Cena is credited in a movie, WWE gets a cut of the profits. The reason why WWE can do this is because they own the intellectual property right on the name John Cena. When asked in 2006 if this bothers him, John Cena said, Absolutely not. Before this, I was a kid in a small Massachusetts town uh, mowing lawns for a golf course. I don't mind kicking a percentage of my, uh, my earnings to the person who gave me a chance and an opportunity. Did you know? That's wild. That's his name, but it don't matter what movie role he does, WWE is going to get a percentage of it. And I get it because obviously WWE made John Cena what he is today. John Cena would probably not be the John Cena we have if it wasn't for WWE. So I, I understand. I understand why, you know, saying he, he doesn't have no ill will towards that. That's, that's wild. Anything he does. WWE's gonna get a cut. Granted, they're paying him handsomely, so it's like it's to him, it's probably nothing. But that's insane. Did not know that. No, Jinder Mahal won the WWE Championship. In I remember. 17. His home province of Alberta, Canada, was so excited that they acknowledged Mahal's victory during the government's legislative assembly, and even mentioned the "Don't Hinder Gender" meme. Oh Second wow. Second one, "Don't Hinder Gender." Sorry, this document from the Calgary Herald. "Don't Hinder Gender Mahal." Wow. Did you know, not a single person has ever kicked out of Baron Corbin's finisher, End of Days. What? When asked if Corbin would rather win the WWE Championship or never have anyone kick out of his finisher, Baron Corbin said this. Let's say I have a 12-year career and no one's ever kicked out of End of Days. Like, that's something that would be talked about longer than championships, I believe. So I that's, I, I remember somebody saying that. Like, no one's ever kicked out of End of Days. <laughs> that's the most overprotected finishing move. That's 
awesome. I didn't know that. Granted, his character gimmick, I hate. I cannot stand Happy Corbin. I, I can't stand it. I wish he would do something else, still be a heel. But that's cool. Wow. You may not have no championships to show it, but you can say no one's ever kicked out of my move. So, like, when it's hit, which, honestly, most finishers should be like that. Once it's hit, it's over. But we're not going to get into that. I think I'd have to go with no one ever kicking out of end of days. Did you know, in 2006, Triple H and Shawn Michaels were part of a backstage segment where they made fun of John Laurinaitis. Direct from John Laurinaitis. That's right. And you guys are in direct violation. <laughs> Fans wouldn't see John Laurinaitis or hear him talk until 2011, mm -hmm. meaning they wouldn't have gotten this joke until five years yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we didn't know who, who the fuck was John, as, except like people that were really into wrestling, like like knew the backstage stories and stuff like that. They really, really knew. So we wouldn't get this reference until years later. That's funny. After DX made it. Did That's you know, funny. Bray Wyatt had a character that we never got to see. Mm. In 2011, after spending about a year on the main roster as Husky Harris, Wyatt was sent back to WWE's development system, FCW. He began creating a new persona and came up with a character named Axel Mulligan. Wyatt wore a mask inspired by the heavy metal band Slipknot, and oh. Mulligan was a reference to Bray's grandfather, Blackjack Mulligan. Axel Mulligan's finisher was also a stunner, mm. but he only wrestled two matches as this character, both wow. of which were not televised. Wyatt would eventually become Bray Wyatt, but eight years later, he he created a new mass persona called The Fiend. Did you know? And they still ruined him, WWE. Creative mind still ruined him. Hell, I'm sure he could have got that character over. To be honest with you, I just... Ah, man. Before they were signed by WWE, Jeff and Matt Hardy would be paid $150 per match. However, the Italian Stallion, the man who trained Jeff and Matt, took wow. $100 as a booking fee. Wow. This left the Hardys with only $50 after every match. On top of that, Jeff and Matt also had to pay for their own travel expenses. Damn. There was also an incident where the Italian Stallion abandoned the Hardys and left them stranded when they were supposed to travel to a show. After that, the Hardys told WWE to call them directly if they ever wanted to use either Jeff or Matt. Not only did WWE do that, but they eventually offered the brothers full-time contracts, and the Hardys didn't have to give the Stallion a single penny. Awesome, man. That's scummy as hell, bro. Damn, what type of shit is that? And that's why you got to be careful with these, these individuals. Yeah, they train you. Like I was once saying, people do something for you, a favor, and then they, they pretty much hold that over you. Well, I trained you, so you wouldn't be getting anything if it wasn't for me. I hate people like that, bro. It's it's different when it's coming from the heart and genuine. Did you know, back when Randy Orton was a teenager, he was a fan of Goldberg. The Viper a was such a big was. fan that when he turned 18, he wanted to get Goldberg's iconic tattoo on his arm. The tattoo artist told the young Orton that it wasn't a good idea to copy another person's tattoo. Yeah. And ultimately, Randy Orton got a similar tattoo to Goldberg's mm -hmm. that still looked different enough. Yeah. As he got more popular, Randy Orton added more tattoos to make sure nobody thought he was wearing Goldberg's tattoo. Mm. He's tatted up though. Oh, well, that's a weird way to end the video. No outro, nothing. But, hey, I enjoyed this. This was cool. If you want me to check out some more Tap Out Corners vids, I definitely will. Y'all go subscribe to him. I'm already subscribed to him. Uh, definitely go check out his stuff. He got other wrestling-related content or whatnot. I think you guys would like more on the informative side. And I like this. So, this is a new channel I just happen to see in my recommended feed so y'all go check out tap our corner maybe some of you guys are already subscribed to him or uh, whatnot but uh appreciate all the love and support man you guys have been showing and comment down below let me know what interesting facts did you not know um that you found out in this video i honestly did not know john cena gives a percentage of his actual real name to wwe no matter what movie role he's in like i didn't know that so that was an interesting fact i didn't know but appreciate all love and support roll to sandy k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace